Good morning, everyone. My name is Todd Ames. I'm excited to be here again. I was here last week, in case you don't remember me. Um, I, uh, the, the weather again is wonderful. I don't know, if, how do you guys do it? Like, I grew up in Binghamton, and the weather is, ne April was never a nice month. But I come here, and it's awesome. It's going to be a little rainy later today, but there's some rumor about April showers bringing something. I forget what that was. Pilgrims, Mayflowers. <laughs> See what I did there? Well, I welcome you to worship. Um, let's all um, be in an attitude of worship as we come to be with the Holy Spirit. Morning. Morning. We need your presence on a long road, Lord. The road between fear and hope, the road between the place of lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be hallowed. Please rise or are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, Holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Water may be poured into the font as the presiding minister continues. for the effect. <laughs> Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from the Our 
satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Please join in our gathering hymn. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. You ever have your ears all plugged up? I don't know. I started singing, and all of a sudden my ears just got plugged. And frankly, I can't hear you, so hopefully you can hear me. Okay. Our first reading is from Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know, with certainty, that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far far away, 
everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation, so that those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me, and I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save me. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid, and you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from 1 Peter, first chapter. If you invoke his father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in the reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you may have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Today's gospel comes from Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. The words in the bulletin are are accurate, the reference is different. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. 
Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our, our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and, has he, appeared, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Are there any children that want to come on down? If you know about come on down, you're probably not a kid anymore, are you? <laughs> How's it going? Oh, they're coming from everywhere. Awesome. How are you this morning? Awesome. So, do you guys remember, I think, you know, back when you were little, there was a time when, like, we had to wear a mask. You guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember that? Oh, it was terrible. The only thing that improved was my looks. <laughs> so, when you guys, did you guys have to wear a mask in school? And the stores? Do you have to wear them at home? No. My family made me wear a mask at home. They still do. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But when you were in school and your friends or maybe your teachers were wearing a mask, did you, how was it like recognizing them? Could you, could you still recognize them? Did you know who your teacher was? By the hair? You could still tell by the, with the mask on? What, could, what, was the, what was it that you could see? Like, aha, you're my teacher. The tallness? Okay. The hair? What about your friends? Maybe, they're, maybe your friends aren't so tall. How do you recognize your friends with masks on? Hair? Name tags on your desk. Awesome. I like that. Anybody else? How did you guys, re how did you guys recognize your friends or your teachers? With their eyes. Ooh. Well, today's gospel, I don't know if you guys heard. The what? Their voice, too. Ooh. I like that. What, in today's gospel, two guys were walking along the road, and they were walking with Jesus, and they didn't recognize him. Do you think he was wearing a mask? I might have something here. I'm going to test it out. Did you say, ooh, tiger? You're another tiger. Let me see what else I have here. Ooh. The hair. You, want, you like a bear too? Tiger? Awesome. Okay, so can everybody, can everybody? It broke? Tiger? Uh, I don't know if I have another tiger. 
These were expensive. <laughs> I bet you a dollar mine's gonna break. Okay, so now, do you guys not recognize each other? How do you know who I am? <laughs> who am I? You know I gotta say it. I'm Batman. <laughs> so are you, can you say it like that too? I'm Batman. Nice. So how would we recognize each other with these masks on? See, you're becoming a lion. It's happening. Can you do it? Can you, do you still see who each other are? Wow. So do you think that maybe those guys back then didn't know what Jesus looked like? Do you think that's what happened? Do you think, cause, or do you think he was wearing a Batman mask? Imagine Jesus in a Batman mask. Well, do you guys know what Jesus looks like? You do? You don't? What does he look like? Do you guys know what Jesus looks like? I got another thing over here. I found, I, this was... This is a very famous painting from, I think, uh, Leonardo da Vinci did this? Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci. Do you guys know which one is Jesus? In the middle? Would you agree? Do you guys, do you know which one Jesus is? In the middle? I don't know if you use this camera. Which one is Jesus? <laughs> it's the one in the middle. So I agree, that's who the painter intended Jesus to be. But how does he know what Jesus looked like? I have another. Well, I ask these questions because how would we know what Jesus looked like? Who's that? That's Jesus? Who's that? That's Jesus? That's actually not Jesus. No! I promise, that's not Jesus. Nobody knows who the model was, but the painter, the, the, the artist who did that, his name was Warner Sulman. Yeah, he made this picture really famous. This was painted in 1940. I know. So this was painted in 1940. And it became very famous, and everyone thinks that's what Jesus looks like. But do you know who, who knows what Jesus looks like? First, the first Jesus, nobody knows what he looks like. Nobody alive today, because they weren't around back then. So we probably wouldn't recognize him. But you guys didn't know there was going to be a quiz. Remember last week? Where do we see Jesus? Nice! Where do you see Jesus? Everywhere. Where do you see, were, were you here last week? Because we saw Jesus out there. And I see Jesus right there, too. Do you remember seeing Jesus last week? Do you remember seeing Jesus last week? You do? I do, too. Well, this, this is a nice painting. It might remind us of Jesus, make us think of Jesus. But that's not what Jesus looks like. It's, I think that's what, that's what he sold um, hundreds of millions of paintings because it's supposed to look like Jesus. But Jesus is out there. Jesus is right here. Jesus is in here. Oh, lion. Lion, where's your Jesus? Right here? Right here. Where's your Jesus, tiger? Right there. Right there in your heart. Right? So, huh. I think that's all I got. Oh, wait. More for your disguise. It's a mustache. You guys can stand up. You guys are hilarious. You guys are awesome.
You want to grow a mustache? You got to sneeze a lot. Believe me, I know. Hold your breath and concentrate on your nose and you'll grow a mustache. I know I have another one in here. Can I give it to you later? I'm not finding it. I'll have to get you a mustache later. Oopsie. Sorry. Um, it's stuck. Oh, wait. What's this one? I don't want to spend time doing it. So you guys can go back to your seats, and I'm going to find a mustache for, for you all. And somebody's got to take a picture of this mustache quartet. Thanks for coming up. You can go be Jesus. <laughs> Mustaches are a favor of focus. Thanks for coming up. I have a captive audience. You want to do that back at your seats? No? You're going to stay up here? Okay, but you got to dance the whole time. That's cool. Is she really going to dance the whole time? wants a mustache. <laughs> so, like we heard, two men are on the road to Emmaus. One is named Cleopas, the other one remains unnamed. They are about seven miles outside of Jerusalem when Jesus appears to them. God keeps the identity of Jesus from them. The men are bummed out Big time. They were among the followers of Jesus, and now he has been crucified and his body is missing. Some women among their group had seen angels proclaim that Jesus was alive. And these men, though, had lost hope that Jesus was their Messiah, promised by God. Jesus got rather indignant, and maybe even a little condescending, in my opinion, with these men in explaining that all these things had to happen according to Scripture. And then later on in the evening, the discussions continue, and the men eventually recognized Jesus, but amazed, they ran back to Jerusalem. They wanted to share with the other disciples what they had experienced. Jesus had left them with a full understanding of the Scripture and the renewed promise of God's gift to them. Have any of you been to Emmaus? Historians, explorers, archaeologists, and scientists can't find Emmaus for sure. So if anybody been there, I might have a PhD level paper idea for you. There are six or seven possible sites that could be Emmaus. Anybody here named Cleopas? Anybody know anybody named Cleopas? The other guy with Cleopas is not even named. So these two guys with no real historical importance, are on a road to a place of no real historical importance. And Jesus appears to them. To them. He listens to their struggles, their strife, their concerns, their doubt, and their frustrations. Then Jesus begins to set them straight. By the end of their journey, their faith, their hope, and their joy had been restored. In less than a day, 
these two nobodies out in the middle of nowhere, going nowhere, who have nothing, are turned around by Jesus. Why did God hide Jesus' identity to them? I think if these two recognized Jesus, they would not have developed that conversation, that back and forth, that, that midrash that probably went on as well as they did. They would have just bought whatever he was selling, I'm sure, because he was Jesus. And God didn't want that. God wanted their hearts to burn. After these, guys, these two guys recognized Jesus and then he disappeared, they said to one another, were our hearts not burning when he walked with us? Jesus fanned those fading embers within them, but the fire inside was still theirs. In fact, from their point of view, it wasn't Jesus during that whole trip. It was some stranger they came across on this dusty and rocky road. Could you be that stranger? I think so. I think God calls us to be that stranger, that secret Jesus to those we come across in our travels. Hold on, Todd. Are you saying that I'm Jesus? No, not exactly Jesus. That's not my intent. But you can be Jesus to someone. You can be an instrument of God's peace. You can be a guide on God's road to Emmaus, the road of grace, patience, and love. Remember, Jesus appeared to a couple of nobodies on a nowhere road who had nothing. And I think you can too. What a life we would live. And what an influence we would live if we could learn to live this kind of life. Letting the attitude be in us which was in Christ. Letting our feet be his transportation. Letting our hands be his tools. Letting our eyes see the world as he sees it. Letting our heart feel the compassion that he feels. Letting our mouth speak the words that he would speak. Letting our ears listen as he would listen. Letting our mind think the things and invent the ideas that he would dwell on. Letting ourselves love as he would love. Pray for one another. Teach one another. Walk with one another. Love one another. And be there for someone. Help someone. You would look at God's beauty in everyone you meet, regardless of what they look like. You'd share the joy and pain of others. You'd use words of encouragement, not comparison. You would learn by teaching and teach by learning the gospel. Don't hear, but listen. You'd come alongside someone and love them. Right now, I wish I could play the, the sound effects that like a car makes in the movies, the brakes and the screeching tires, they come to a sudden and full stop. So I need to take a couple of minutes here and step outside this message just a little bit. This is only my third time leading worship with you folks, but it is my sixth time with you. My first time was when you all voted to call Roger Barron's. The second time was Roger's installation and ordination service. The third time was Roger's final service. Then I led worship a few weeks back, and again last week. By nature, I'm not a very subtle person, so I want to tell you that, and I'll tell you very candidly. I saw, a couple weeks ago, I saw this community as one with pain, one with hurt, and one in need of big healing in order to take any steps into the future of your role in God's mission in this world. Clearly, you have been blessed. And you are among the blessed communities. But I saw you somehow hamstrung as a family. Well, call me Cleopas. Last week, you fanned the embers of my soul. You set my heart on fire. You all set me straight, didn't you? It wasn't a prayer. It wasn't a hymn. You all do pray and sing wonderfully, I gotta tell you. It was the announcements. Usually the announcements are informative. They're good to bring out your calendar on your phone, but they're not very provocative. And as I watch people line up, there was a certain excitement. Just them standing there, there was an excitement. There was a joy as we heard about a luau that would benefit kids in the community. There was love 
as we heard about kits for people just finding their first homes. We heard caring of God's creation about efforts to clean up the river. We heard hospitality in cleaning up around the church and the manse because somebody new is coming. There was teaching and learning with a new book study being launched. And there's more ministries, fellowship, and outreach opportunities in your newsletters and websites. I list these today, joy, kindness, love, hospitality, and teaching, and on and on, not necessarily as an advertisement for you, but instead as evidence. According to Paul's letter of the, to the Ephesians, those are fruits of the Holy Spirit. I offer them back to you as evidence that the Holy Spirit is here. I believe that when you find these fruits, the Holy Spirit must be there. And when you are in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you will experience and receive those fruits. I know you already know what I might be just learning. I hope you already know anyways. I also hope you know that your announcements last week was Jesus for me. I hope they're Jesus for you. One way you can tell is ask yourself if they set your soul on fire. Are your hearts blazing with the Holy Spirit individually? As a community, yes. I can attest to that. But individually, are they blazing? You'll know if you, if you feel unbounded to do the work that you're called to do. If you are energized with joy. If you are overcome with hope. If you are drowning in love for your community. That's the effect of walking alongside Jesus. If you feel like you may not feel like you have any of that, I would recommend you jump up and do what you can. You don't need to worry about making a big splash. You don't need to shoot for global change. Those two guys, those two guys on the road to Emmaus, I have no evidence that they changed the world. But I'm sure they changed somebody's world because of their walk with Jesus. I can tell you without doubt that their world too was changed. It was reinvented, it was spun the other way because of their brief time with Jesus. This community, this place, these people, your people, are people of Jesus. You know what? If nothing on your community's menu intrigues you and it's extensive, what does? I'll bet you a dollar that you could start work in this community with that passion. And that's it right there, that passion is what heats your heart. That passion is actually your call from Christ. That passion is how you are to be Christ for others. Bethany Elmira can be that road to, on a, to Emmaus for you. That place where your life has changed. This is where your spark for humanity can be fanned into mission and ministry those missions and ministry that are the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus is here. You may not recognize him. You might see him once you're bursting, though, with love, hope, joy, and all the other fruits of the Spirit. And when you do, it will be life-changing. There will be no going back, so I'm warning you. You will be made new. This Right here, where you are right now, is your road to Emmaus. Jesus is here, and he might not be what you think he looks like. To be honest, I'm pretty sure none of us would actually physically recognize Jesus. But you would recognize his way. Back to those fruits. You couldn't miss those fruits. Let me run this by you. A sermon is important to work through God's word, God's word and learn about the ministries of Jesus. But here at Bethany Elmira, the announcements are where it's happening. Literally, it's where it's happening. The sermon may be the word, but the announcements are the mission. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for that.
Please rise your able and join in the singing of the hymn of the day with high delight. prayers today, we will remember our brother Clarence Messing, who passed away on Friday. He is grandfather to Wendy and great-grandfather to Zach, Riley, McKaylee, and Ashlyn. Please prepare for prayer. You may sit or kneel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've got my pages in the wrong order. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in joy to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Right. Now you may be seated for prayer.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Today we lift in prayer the Van Sickle family, the Vary family, and the Wieselmeyer family. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowering water, flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those in the military who safeguard threatened land and water. We especially pray this day for Dylan Hornbeck, Ryan Quarry, and Ryan Taylor. Hear us, O oh God. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O God. Mother in God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting and healing presence this day, especially Maggie Davies, Pat Kozan, John McDermott, and all those we name aloud or within our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints, especially our brothers Mike Malone and Clarence Messing. As you have raised them to eternal life, Abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels cherubim and seraphim we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and, these, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and all places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is my favorite part. It does not matter who you think you are. It does not matter what you think you've done. You are welcome here at the Lord's table. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you. Peace. 
Rise for the blessing as you're able. May this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ protect you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. No pressure on the announcements, by the way. I've never been nervous to make an announcement before. <laughs> Uh, last week, we met for our first session of the book study on Be the Bridge, uh, reconciling um, racial differences in our, in our midst. And we had about a dozen folks there and a wonderful discussion. We all came from different experiences and different understandings of how things are and how things are going and where they need to go. And that added a great depth to our discussion. And I say that because that means that you could still join us if you haven't. Um, your, your input would be certainly uh, welcome and would help to enrich us that much more. So we will be meeting again next Sunday after the reception uh, for Pastor Susan. So please consider joining us if you haven't already. And this is a follow-up on the river cleanup that we had yesterday. Uh, it was a beautiful morning, the afternoon it was kind of crap, but the morning was beautiful. Um, 15 people uh, from Bethany from um, and the two Presbyterian churches, North Press and uh, First Presbyterian, uh, worked to clean up the river, and Sue Osborne cleaned up all by herself, Katie Leary Park. We collected 12 bags of trash. It was a lot of trash. I think this is the first major cleanup of the spring. So thanks to everyone who joined us, and uh, we'll keep you posted on when we have our next cleanup. Oh, 15. Wow, okay. That, that's 12 bags of trash is a lot. 15 people, wow. I need a ladder. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, a week from tomorrow, uh, some of us will be volunteering at Community Kitchen, and some of us are also going to go up to the Hilltop Inn on Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, because they're going to have, give us a little bit of a training as to what we should be doing or not doing at the community kitchen. My other notice is next Sunday is our noisy offering. So 
Find any coins you have around your house, bring them in. We want to have a lot because our money for the community, uh, for the noisy offering will be combined with the, the sales from the, the geranium sales. And it will assist the resettlement and restoration efforts after the many, many disasters that have recently hit in the U.S. Luckily, we haven't had much here, but boy, some places they have. Thank you. On behalf of the hospitality team, I just want to say thank you again to Pastor Todd for that sermon, because it sure made me proud <laughs> and lit a fire in all of us, I think. And thanks to the people who organized the Luau last night, because it really was fun. We at a Hospitality talk a lot about building community, and doing things together helps that so much. And, and I want to say, too, Two weeks from now, when Pastor Dan uh, presides for the first time with us, Hospitality hopes that everybody will wear your name tag so he can get to know us. Um, and there are now lanyards on the table to the right of the door to the Fellowship Hall. If someone doesn't want to use the clip, you can get yourself a lanyard. So thank you for doing that. Speaking of working together, building community together, um, next Saturday is the property committee's um, spring cleanup. And there's, as you start looking around in the sunshine and seeing cobwebs, you can all see that it's needed. And we hope to see you next week. Yeah, we start it and it's set from nine to 12, but you know, show up when you can. We have. Uh, we'll have pizza and salad at noon, um, and people can sign up for the size T-shirt that they want. I'll be ordering them after the event. So I've become very, I, I have like multicolored Thrivent T-shirts now. I really love them. That's about all I ever wear at home. <laughs> Reminder that uh, Loaf is meeting tomorrow at Anthony's restaurant. We have a room reserved for ourselves. Uh, everyone is welcomed. You're welcome to bring a, a friend as a guest as well. Well, we are going to continue the Aloha spirit during coffee hour. We had a good time last night supporting the children's clothing closet, but we'd like to welcome all of you to come and enjoy all the rest of the goodies that we have left over. And also to be aware, we did raise a little money last night. There is a basket as you enter in for more. And I, I want to make you aware that last Monday, um, we, had, we serviced 20 children. Um, it, it looks like when seasons change, that's when the need is high. So we definitely need that money to purchase socks and underwear and some slacks. So um, come on in and enjoy the fellowship. And also to be aware that we are going to have a thank you reception for Pastor Susan next Sunday after worship. It's going to be a light lunch. Hospitality is putting this on, so we're going to order some platters, but we would really like, and we're not going to have a sign-up, just but if you could bring a dessert that morning, we'll set that up. Thank you. And thank you, Todd. You did a great job today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You guys didn't disappoint again. Nice job. The Holy Spirit is slinging fruits around here. <laughs> what does loaf stand for? 
Oh, okay. I knew it had to stand for something. It wasn't just loaf. Okay. Please rise your able. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Please join in our sending hymn. Amen. Amen.